You're now listening to the Self Development Collective, a podcast and community full of inner work and self development ideas to help us get unstuck and become the person we truly want to be. Hi, guys, and welcome to this episode of the Self Development Collective. So, today in this episode, I am reaching out to someone who Uh, who wrote in the survey. So the survey is something that I have when you join the community. I like to know a bit more about you. Now, this is an anonymous survey. It just gives me a bit of insight into what's going on in the community and what's going on with the people that are joining the community. And one of the questions that I have is, uh, what are the two questions that you have about self-esteem and relationships? So if you have a question that you'd like answered. I go through those questions. I look through and I try to answer the questions that I feel I have genuine answers for things that have truly helped me. I like to share. So if you have any questions at the moment, um, make sure to join the community. You will get sent an email with the survey link. um, And that way I can just get a bit more insight into what's happening again with, with the reader, with the readers, the listeners, um, And I love to answer these questions. Um, This is what I do, guys. I love this. So please let me know if you have any questions on self-esteem or relationships. So make sure to join the community link below and you will get an email. But today I'm responding directly. Um, I want to reach out to the person who uh, wrote this in the survey because I feel like this is a really important moment that or opportunity that we have here. Um, Now, this person has lost her mother in 2020 um, and she wrote saying that, Um, she has lost her zest for life, uh, that she uh, feels like she's lost her self-respect. She hates feeling this way. Uh, She just wants to feel better again. Um, Now, I've decided to do an episode on this rather than just a video in the community because this will be a longer episode. I do want to talk about healing after grief. I want to talk about how to cope with grief. How how do we find ourselves after tragedy, right? How do we find meaning again when something so big happens and we just can't see out of it? So that's why I'm doing this as an episode in a podcast today. I feel like there's a lot of people that – Uh, might need this because we all hit rock bottom. We all go through different types of traumas in our life. Um, You know, for me, it was losing my brother, Um, really struggled, really struggled because, and, you know, it actually took me going to see a counsellor to realise how traumatic it was. She basically said, like, you know, you watch someone who didn't want to die, die. Like, that's horrible. That's a horrible experience. Um, And it was, and it was really hard. Um, And so I can only imagine how this person feels right now having to have their mum pass away, um, which would be really hard. And I think the biggest challenge when it comes to coping with grief and healing with grief is that we don't talk about it enough. And what happens is that prevents us to about to prevents us from connecting on the topic. And it makes us feel like we're just a little crazy because we can't cope. Um, And so that's why I'm sharing this today. It's really important, please, if you know someone who's struggling with grief at the moment, please pass this episode on. Um, And this is not like a self-promotion thing. This is just a genuine thing so that person feels a little less lonely in the world right now because the thing with grief is that it makes you feel like you're the only person in the world struggling. And the challenge when we are struggling is we tend to get really down on ourselves because we think it's just us um, when in reality it's the experience Um, grief is hard. Any sort of grief is hard, whether it's a loss of a relationship, a divorce, a physical loss of someone, any sort of trauma involves grief because it's the loss of our previous life. It's the loss of our version of ourselves that we are used to, and it involves rebuilding. And something that I, um, I was reading, um, it was at the, um, sixth stage of grief grief, sorry, um, by David Kessler. He's a big grief writer. Um, he spoke about the broken vase and said that, you know, off to say that you, so grief is kind of, it breaks us. There's no other way to explain it. It literally breaks us into pieces. And the challenge with grief is that after grief or not after grief, so I shouldn't say that after the experience that's caused the grief or brought it on. So after my brother passed away, for example, we tend to go back to life, but the challenge is that we go back to a life that fits the way we were, not who we are now. And that that's why I love the idea of the broken vase, because when a vase shatters, 
which is what happens when we when we go through trauma, we shatter, right? We break into pieces. We tend to try and put those pieces back together as we were. So it's like putting that vase together as it was. But the challenge is that those pieces, they don't fit, or maybe we're missing a piece. Um, it doesn't look the same. And that's something that I realized with grief. And I'm sure this person's experiencing that right now. Everybody else goes back to their life, but you were different. So everything looks the same, but your experience is now different because your mindset has changed. The way you've experienced things has shifted the way that you perceive things. And it's really hard to go back to your old life when nothing feels the same, but everything looks the same. And that's the challenge I have experienced personally. Um, And the challenge is like, losing your zest for life, sometimes it's about expecting ourselves to have the same zest that we had before. But again, it's like the broken vase. We try to put it together, but we are different. And it's not about putting to get, putting the pieces back together and making ourselves the exact way we were before. So making the vase or vase, however you, however you say it, but it's about using those pieces to recreate something different. And the example he gives is like a mosaic, but it's about Allowing those pieces and those cracks in those pieces to redefine who we are and and change our lives. So this is the challenge. I do think that a lot of times with grief, not just ourselves, but the people around us expect us to go back to the person that we were. And it's just not possible. Again, I love that quote where it says that cracks let the light in. That's definitely what happened for me when I started experiencing the grief. Um, It started to help me. I saw things differently. We see things so differently. You cannot see things in the same way. It's impossible. That's the whole thing of trauma. It redefines so many concepts that we had Um, and even self-concepts, right? And this is the biggest challenge. So this is why I wanted to reach out to this person. First, please show yourself self-compassion. You have gone through something huge in 2020. We are in 2022. I constantly reminded myself that I have loved someone for 29 years and now I'm learning to love them while they are not here. And it's probably going to take longer than 20. It's going to take my whole lifetime to get used to that. But I wanted to share that because sometimes we forget just what we've been through and we forget to show ourselves self-compassion. It is normal to feel like shit right now. It is normal to feel like you have lost your zest for life because you have lost someone that you love. So the first thing I would say is be self-compassionate with yourself. I remember texting a friend and saying to him, I am just struggling right now. What is wrong with me? And this was like a year after my brother had passed away. And he said to me, and I'll never forget this. He said to me, the definition of coping is struggling, but continuing on. And fuck me, do we have to struggle and continue on when we are learning to live with our grief? And that is what you are doing. You are learning to live with your grief. You are piecing those pieces back together. You are piecing those pieces into something new. So give yourself self-compassion on your tough days. You are a good person, but you are, you are struggling right now. And that is okay. You are someone who is missing your loved one and that is okay. And, you know, something that I've learned with self-esteem as well and self-respect is we have to respect our process. We have to respect what comes up for us. We have to value the things that come up for us. We have to value ourselves enough to let us feel the tough days because the challenge isn't that we don't survive them. The challenge is that we do. So that is the first tip that I would give to this person. Please remember to be self-compassionate. Please remember that honoring our process is so important in our self-respect, in our self-esteem, accepting and working with the challenges that we have, allowing ourselves to have the tough days and communicating that to the people that we love. So I know for me, tip number two would be to communicate as hard as it is, even if you prefer to message it, even if you prefer to text it, just let someone know. And the way that I would explain it um, to my best friends is I'm processing. I'm having a processing day. That was a way I would word it because for me, that really accurately defined what was going on. I am trying to process today. I am trying to process the grief, the experience that I'm having right now. I'm trying to work with the longing and the missing, and I'm trying to sit with it today. And that's what I usually label it, a processing day. 
And slowly, slowly, I've realized too that by communicating during difficult times and something that I heard recently was that it's those tiny moments of connecting people, connecting with people that help us to heal that trauma. And again, I like to say transform, but it helps us to transform that trauma. It helps us to reconnect with others and feel safe connecting with others again, because that can be another challenge. When you lose someone, connecting with other people is risky, right? Because not only have we do we know what it feels like to lose someone, but we have to remember every day that the pe- other people that we love that we still have, we might lose them too. And that's something that I found also really challenging in understanding that connection can be scary after grief because we're worried of going through the grief again. But the thing is that it's a two-sided, it's two sides of the same coin, right? We cannot have grief without love or love without grief. Because I love thinking of that idea that grief is a love without physical form. And I remember my cousin saying something really good to me, uh, really helpful, I should say, um, when when my brother passed, he said, I said, you know, I'm I'm just struggling. I just I'm I'm struggling. And he said, um, Yes, because you're learning to live without him and you don't know what that's going to be like until you actually have to do it. You can't anticipate it. And the challenge with me was that I had seen my brother deteriorate over a couple of years. So I really thought that when he, you know, I I think people assume that in those types of situations, you just kind of get like, you kind of see, you experience the grief as you're losing them, but then Physically losing them is a whole different thing and you do have to learn how to live with that. And that's something that I had to remember as well. But I really, really, really hope that this episode reaches that person that wrote to me because losing your zest for life is so normal. I struggled for for so long after my like, and I have days where I still struggle, and days with where, where I feel grateful that I I loved him even to begin with, that I had him in my life. Every day is different, and that's also the story of the human. That's that's our story as human beings. It's not about expecting ourselves to feel one emotion consistently, but allowing them to come in and out, as Rumi says, allowing them in, allowing them in, and letting us process them as they come up, which is why I always say I'm having a processing day and respecting that process, right? Doing the things that self-soothe us on those processing days. So that would be my first the uh, fir- first pieces of advice. Um, the next thing that I would say um, is about recreating ourselves. So something that I got advice on was writing down all the things that I always wanted to do and choosing something to do. Choosing something because for me, I'd never gotten to those things. Um, And I think that just helps us to find our way again, right? To figure out who we want to be. And you might start something and hate it. And that's absolutely fine because it means you're one step closer to figuring out what you do love, right? But I think when it comes to grief, we have to work with the new person. So basically the way I see it is for me, part of the process of piecing those pieces, those shattered pieces back together was thinking of the things I always wanted to do and doing them, creating new moments for myself by, and I walked a lot when my brother passed away. I found that really helpful as well. So doing the things, and I started running as well. Um, just doing the things that we feel work for us right now, listening to your body, listening to what feels right. I was not a big outdoors person. Then my brother passed away and I wanted to be outside all the time. I would literally just go out and sit in the sun. And I was not that, I never used to do that before. So I think it's also about allowing yourself to piece those pieces into something new, but doing that in what feels right for you. Taking those steps and listening to what truly sits with you right now. And even if that's nothing, then just do nothing. But sometimes it's that process of self-acceptance. And something that um, Carl Rogers said, who's a big psychotherapist, and I think maybe a psychiatrist, said, you know, to truly, to truly move forward from something, we have to accept it. And so I think the biggest challenge and the things that I see right now is you're, you know, this, this person, you're spending a lot of time fighting the fact that you're struggling, but it is so normal that you're struggling. And so I think that's something that really needs to be acknowledged. And I know for me, when I stopped and just felt it, um, it's, it passes. Um, I think the tough times come and go in waves. Um, and I've learned 
So this is this is something else that I've learned as well. It's not that the intensity of the grief changes. I just allow myself to sit with it more. I have more courage to sit with myself. I allow my process rather than fight it. So that's something that I wanted to say to you as well. Um, sit with yourself. You're piecing your pieces into something new. Allow that process to look like whatever it looks like right now. Remember that you're having processing days and please remember out of everything that you are not alone in this. My zest for life has come back and my life looks so different. And I remember talking to my husband um, and saying to him, I'm okay, but my version of okay looks a lot different to what I thought. And this is the thing, right? Sometimes in that version of okay, we expect ourselves to just be okay. But sometimes the version of okay right now is struggling but continuing on. Sometimes that version of okay is I have days where I'm in an absolute grief shitstorm and other days where I'm fine. And that's what it looks like. I know for me that milestones are so different for me right now. I feel sad and I struggle before every single milestone. The birth of my daughter has been one of the toughest things that I have ever been through grief wise because it has triggered every single experience that I wish I'd had with my brother. That is the truth of the matter. My version of okay still includes the struggle. It doesn't, it doesn't take it out. I just know that sometimes I struggle and sometimes I don't. And I allow space in my life for both. Now, this is my experience and every person's grief experience is different, but I really wanted to reach out to this person and to every person that feels like they have lost their zest for life and they are hating themselves because of it. Because unless we learn to sit with our challenges and unless we learn to accept the challenges and be self-compassionate, it is so hard to move forward and transform from whatever we have been through. You are rebuilding yourself. You're piecing those pieces back together. You will figure it out in your own time and in your own way, but allow yourself to do it the way that your body is calling and the way that your soul is calling you to do it. So I hope that you found this episode helpful. And I literally, I I pray that this video gets out to this person because if I have recorded any video, this is by far the most important because I read this person's message. And the only thing I'm disappointed at with the survey is it's anonymous guys. So I don't know who that person is and I can't, I can't actually reach them other than I hope that she is in the community or reading the emails because this is what I mean. This is why it's so important to stay connected and this is why this community is there because connection is what heals and I want you to know that you are not alone in this. So if this person reads this, um, if this person reads this, uh, sorry, here's this video, listens to it, reads a transcript, transcript, please email me, reach out if you need someone to talk to you because I'm here for you. Um, and again, I have learned that knowing, just knowing that we're not alone in this process, knowing that we're, that other people struggle too, is sometimes just enough to keep us going, right? Um, so I really hope that you found this episode helpful. Please pass it on to anyone else that you know at the moment who, who's struggling to rebuild, who's struggling to find themselves, who's struggling with grief, who's struggling to heal after grief. Um, these are the simple things that have helped me. So being self-compassionate, letting the process be what it is, practicing that self-acceptance, understanding that our version of okay looks different, understanding that we are different and that is okay. Um, and learning to create, recreate and transform and become the person we want to be by doing small, simple things um, that are about piecing those pieces into something new. So I hope you found this episode helpful. Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you in the next one. You're now listening to the Self Development Collective, a podcast in community full of inner work and self-development ideas to help us get unstuck and become the person we truly want to be.